Welcome back everyone, thanks for joining me this week. Today I want to share with you a query I wrote to automate a really tedious process. 58 coffee beans, 59 coffee beans, 60 coffee beans. Okay, maybe not quite that tedious, but it's pretty close. So lately I've been parsing a lot of JSON files from different sources, so I'm not familiar with how they're structured or what the data looks like. And my preferred method of kind of getting to know the data is by putting it into a database, into a set of tables, so I can better understand the relationships and what the data feels like. The problem with that though is the, the table creation step of kind of taking this JSON data and moving it into tables and columns in a database uh, is just super tedious. I hate doing it. So that's where today's query comes in. I built this query so you can pass in a JSON string, a JSON document or object, and have SQL Server generate all of the create table statements for your JSON's object structure. So even if you don't have the same problem as me today, because I realize you know, not everyone's gonna be doing that, uh, still stick around because it's an interesting query uh, because it uses a recursive CTE We do some interesting, you know parsing there and then it uses dynamic SQL to actually build our create table statement So I think you'll get something out of it So let's take a look at how this thing works at the top We have a few parameters the first one obviously being the JSON object that we want to parse I also variableized a couple other options like what you want your schema name to be called what the root table in your JSON object should be called and most importantly, I think, is this padding, this string padding variable. Um, because as you'll see, the script chooses the max length of values within a certain column, and that's what it sets the nvarcar max length to. This string padding variable allows it to give yourself a little bit of extra space in those columns uh, in case the particular file that you're using to generate all these create table statements doesn't have the longest possible values for a given property. All right, so next we have our recursive CTE. This is really the heart of it where we parse our nested JSON object into its properties and values and where we you know, define what our table name, our column names, and our data types are gonna be. To do this, we use the open JSON function, which actually is really nice because it does a great job of parsing the different JSON properties and values uh, into columns and rows in SQL Server. In addition to parsing out the properties and values, the open JSON function also tells us the type of data that we're dealing with. So we know if we're dealing with a string or a number, a Boolean, an array or another JSON object. And we use that information to determine what our data types are gonna be. So one thing to note is with the open JSON function, it returns the data with a specific collation that my database was not defaulted to. And I was getting all these crazy mismatched data type errors. And it wasn't that my data types were wrong, it was actually that the collation was wrong. So uh, the documentation says this, but who reads documentation, right? So if you do happen to start you know, playing around with this query and change things, just be aware that you have to specify and match the collation that the open JSON function is returning. We then recursively loop over each child object in our JSON uh, string so that we can capture all of the different property names and values. And what we do in this query is that the property names basically become our table and column names within those tables. And we have two more additional common table expressions at the end after our recursive one and those help create our integer identity columns for each table. So I create a column that has the table name with ID uh, appended to the end of it. And that's our identity column for each table. I just like having them. We also create a foreign key column for our child objects. We know how to link back to our parent table. Now we're not creating a constraint or anything like that for the foreign key, but we are including the parent table's name with ID once again appended to the end of that column name so that we can populate those IDs later on once we insert our data. And so within that CTE, we do have some additional conditional logic for correctly defining the data types, right? Like numbers, we try to determine, is it a flow, is it an integer? Um, I mentioned earlier, we're already determining the max length of our string columns, booleans become bits, we try to parse into date times when possible. And so that's basically it for our recursive CTE parsing portion. So after the CTE is the dynamic SQL part of the query, there's not really much going on there. If, if you've written dynamic SQL before, it's pretty straightforward. We're basically going row by row through the result set that's getting returned from our CTE. CTE and building out our create table statements with all our column data types and things like that. And so that's it, right? The final print statement 
prints out all of our create table statements. So you can see the parent objects are mapped out, the child objects and tables are mapped out, our you know table names and property names are there. We have identity columns and we have columns that we're gonna designate for foreign keys in our database. It basically removes all that tedious work of having to write these create table statements by hand. And so that's basically it, right? I mean, a few things to be aware of is that this is definitely a very primitive uh, version of this type of script. I just use it so it mostly gets things right. If I have to edit a couple things, like sometimes I get duplicate column names based on how the JSON structures are, not a big deal to delete one column name, right, and just move on. So even though it's not perfect, I figured let me release it. Uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of it. Hopefully you'll find some use in it too if you're having to kind of structure and parse these types of JSON documents into database tables. You can find the full code linked below, uh, down both in the blog post and on my GitHub page. Feel free to download it, use it. If you do use it, let me know how it works for you. So that's it, thanks for watching this week. If you haven't already, please subscribe by either clicking that button or tapping it on your phone, or if you're on a HoloLens, use a gesture, whatever you do to click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.